Alright, so today I'm going to teach you how to detect if a player touched something in Roblox Studio. And it's pretty simple, so I'll show you how to do it. So if we were to have like a part, and we added a script into it, we could do local part equals script.parent, then we can do part dot, and you'll see there's a touched event. So we can connect it to a function, and right here inside uh, this, these little brackets, we get the parameter hit. So if we print hit.name, every time that part is touched, it's going to uh, print that parameter. So you'll see what that means. And you'll see what happens. So you can see it's printing whatever touched it. So base plate, legs, if we moved it up, it would print like our head and our hat, whatever collides with it, really. So the cool part about this is there's like a lot you can do with it. So if we were to anchor this and we went into here, we could do if hit.parent find first child humanoid then. So since we were getting the player's like legs and stuff, the hit.parent would be the character. Oops, we have to add the if. All right. So we were like right now we're searching through the player's character to find the humanoid, which confirms it is a player. So if we print hit.parent.name. You'll see it just prints my name. So we have the player now. So say we wanted to run some code that damaged the player. We could do hit.parent.humanoid.l minus equals three. So we'll just take three damage every time it registers a hit. So you can see we're getting hurt. Now, thanks for watching. That was a great tutorial. Bye bye. No, I'm kidding. Now, I'm going to show you how to detect when the player stopped touching something. So, if we copied this part, uh, this little function, we can actually... So, we'll ch actually, we'll delete both of these, and we'll change the script to change the color's part. So, part.color is color 3 that from RGB. We're going to make it green when it touches, and we're going to make it red when it stops touching. So, part.touch, we could change it to touch ended. So... When you touch the part, it will turn green. When you stop touching the part, it will turn red. So yeah, that's pretty simple. Now, a better like way to use this, like you know, you can make kill bricks, of course, but you can also like, for example, make a key card door. So we could take this part, scale it up. Now I'm going to add a little dude so that we know how big this door is. So I'm not making like the tallest door ever. All right. We'll just duplicate this. Uh, then we'll remove the script from this. We'll name it. And we'll keep it part. All right, so we'll just darken this and we can copy the script. We'll take the script, we'll duplicate this part and we'll just put the script inside of that part that we just did. We're, we're gonna name it key card reader. Sorry if I'm doing this a bit fast. Like usual, I don't really have a lot of time to record my tutorials right now, but I will try to get them out anyway. So, we have our door, which we have. To, we should probably name it door, and we have our keycard reader. So, we can remove the touch ended, and we'll just check if hit dot parent. I mean, no, if hit dot name equals uh, awesome keycard, and we'll add a little door variable. Local door equals game dot workspace dot door. So, if the name is keycard, then door.transparency equals 1 door I can't collide equals false cast dot wait oops, wait 3 then we'll just copy this and we'll paste it back so this is really simple but it'll work pretty well and well now all we need is a, a little tool to be the key card so we're just gonna inside the workspace we'll add a tool 
and we will just add a part. We'll name this part handle. We'll scale it to be the size you want our key card. So about that big. We'll duplicate it. We'll put that new duplicate part inside of the old handle. We'll add a weld constraint. We'll name this handle name to be awesome key card like ooh, my voice is cracking like uh we did inside the script so it's checking for this name except we gotta since i type in uh camel case gotta capitalize that cape so inside the handle and the uh awesome key card part just turn off the collisions in the awesome key card part you can actually we can just hide the handle we'll make the handle transparency one awesome key card we'll make it red then inside the weld, we'll just do part zero equals awesome key card and part one equals handle. So we have a tool now. We can name it key card. Now there's going to be a plugin in the description, which basically just lets you change like how the player is holding it. It's free, I think. If it's not, I'll find a free alternative that works the same. So you just click it. You'll get this little dude and you'll have some controls. You can do Z to rotate or to uh, switch it to moving. So we're just going to press Z, rotate it, and move it like this. So it's all right. So we'll just press the tool grip editor again. And now this part's set. It's a little bit crooked, but you can be more like, I don't know. You can make yours look nicer than mine. So we'll just put this inside of the starter pack. We will go over our parts and make sure they're not anchored. Because if they're anchored, the character is going to start tweaking. All right. If we play the game. And everything is anchored you'll see you can, you can unlock the door with that key card and that's just a really simple like explanation of the touched and touched ended there's a lot more you could do with it like hitboxes but i don't want to overcomplicate this tutorial you can really detect like if a player touched something or like if a part touched a part so it's pretty useful so yeah so yeah i hope you enjoy that tutorial and i don't know Make something cool. Bye-bye.